Okay, thank you. Good evening. Today is Tuesday, October 20th, 2015. Milford Planning Board is now in session. Make a motion Mi on the minutes. Minutes, uh, mi a motion made by Pat. Second. Second by Joe. All in favor? Unanimous. There are none, no 81 P's. Number three, amended site plan 308 Main Street, 308 Incorporated. Uh, read the, I'll read the uh, applicants. Dear Madam Chairman, the applicant requests the amended site plan approval to construct a 7,306 foot, six square foot single story professional office building and related park and parking on the subject property. The existing commercial building are to be raised and the parking lot reconfigured. Specifically, the proposal is to construct a medical building, medical office building with a 40 space off street parking lot. The multiple driveways on Main Street will be closed to improve safety and traffic flow on Main Street, which is Route 16. The existing driveway on Chapin Street will be retained and reconstructed to current design standards. Landscaping and scenery, screenery will be provided and open space on the site will be increased from 25% to 32%. I have reviewed the site plan to find it applicable zoning requirements appear to be met. Therefore, I recommend approval of the amended site plan. Uh, respectfully, our town planner, Larry Duncan. Uh, this is from the, uh, our, our engineer, I have reviewed the amended site plan. The applicant is, is the application is for demolishing the existing building. Uh, I have no other further comments along with the co uh, conservation agent, no comments. Uh, the Milford Fire Department, the Milford Fire Department has reviewed an amended site plan submitted to 308 Main Street and requests no changes. The Milford Commission on Disability provides the following comments. Uh, did you? Those were met. Huh? Those were met. Did you make every one of those? Yeah, I can You're going to go. I, I can, I can you, you, oh, all right. All right. I'll wait for you to go through them. Yeah, that was the last one. Yes. All set. Okay, okay. Peter. Uh, for the record, my name is Peter Lavoie. I work with Gary and Helnon. Uh, I'm the engineer on this project. Um, the site's located on Main Street, on the corner of Main Street and Chapin Street, which runs along the side here and here. Um, we have an existing 31,000 square foot lot right here. Uh, we have an existing, there, there is an existing 7,100 square foot building in this location here. And like you had mentioned, there are a number of curb cuts along mm -hmm. Main Street here. And then there's an existing curb cut on Chapin Street right in this location. There is park, there is pavement out there, but it's not, there's no striping or anything like that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to raise the existing building, which was in this location here, and we're going to construct a 7,300 square foot one-story building in this location. The main entrance is right here, facing Chapin Street. Okay. So that's, that's how it's, the building's going to be faced. So, and then we have... Uh, 40 parking spaces around it, like this. And then we are closing the, all the entrances on Main Street mm -hmm. and redoing the, the sidewalk. And the sidewalk. Yep, yep. And then we're, we're revising the, the width and the curve radiuses into the site on uh, Chapin Street. We will add handicap ramps. There is a, a sidewalk that runs across Chapin. We will yep. redo the sidewalks in that location over there. Um, Sewer is going to come off Main Street. We're going to use the existing sewer. We're going to just put a manhole here and tie into the existing building. Yep. I mean, the proposed building, excuse yep. me. Water, we have to cap the water line. We have to cap the existing surface at the water main in Main Street. And we're going to bring in a new main, a new two inch main mm -hmm. from Main Street. That's what the water department wants. Um, gas, we're going to come off of Chapin for gas, and it's going to tie into here. Uh, I do show a uh, transformer pad up in the corner here, which will be screened with landscaping. And then that's going to come into the building. On, right now, the site really has very minimal drainage uh, on there, but all the drainage comes to an existing drain line that runs through these, it goes right through these properties. There's a, an existing drop inlet 
right over here, and then there's uh, a couple um, like trench drains because there's a loading dock. If you go, if you drive by, there's a loading dock. Yes, so there's a load I've point. seen it. There are a couple drains that are going to be removed, and what we're going to do is, I'm adding a catch basin here and a catch basin here, that will collect the parking lot runoff, and that will tie into the existing drain line. Uh, I did do a drainage analysis. I am not. I'm decreasing um, the rate and volume leaving the site into that. Um, the way I'm also doing it is we, we did reduce the pavement um, so there is more open space and then we're taking the roof and we're putting it into an underground recharge basin in the parking lot here. So you were getting recharge from that and we also decreased the impervious area on the site. Um, there is a residential and commercial zone line that runs along the side here just to let you know that. Um, and that's, that's basically it. Do you have any questions? You know, seeing it's in a, a residential area also, I know the area well. What about lighting in that parking lot and how, how close are the ho homes close to that? Well, there's, there's one existing home. We did show there is one existing yeah. home right here. Um, there's only going to be security lights on the building. Okay. There is one pole light here and two pole lights on Main Street. So there are, they, we did push them away from, from the buildings and they will go direct, directly down. down as well. This is the closest building on this side and that would be the closest uh, mm -hmm. light. We are proposing a fence along the property line. What size fence? Uh, six, foot. six foot high. And then there's another structure back here. You plant, like, are you doing any plantings around the closest to the proximity of, of the residential. I see that you have plantings. Most of them are out front. Yeah, I think we did show, there, there are a bunch of arborvitaes out there now that we're going to relocate. C2. C2. Two. C2. Two. 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 I see, <laughs> um, you know, I see that the one on Chapin you've given a few to, and I see that you've also gone around the looks like around the dumpster um, but Correct. anything um, closest to the one on Main Street um, all I'm showing is the fence and the two trees on the corner yeah I'm curious if you can just only because of the proximity of the two houses there, and I see that you like I said you, you you've tried to capture the the one on Chapin yeah I'm curious if there's you know specifically in the back corner if you have any room yeah in that area yeah. that you could perhaps put some additional plantings. Are you talking about adjacent to the house on Main? Yeah, in I'm thinking the, Main, yeah. In between the guardrail and the fence, because there is a guardrail No, here. I see the guardrail, I see the fence, but I'm, fence. And I'm assuming that you probably have, what, another eight feet, 10 feet at most? Uh, it's probably, it's lo looking like, look like six or five. Doesn't right look there. like eight feet. There's really not much room to put any vegetation there. That's why we proposed the fence. No, I know, but... And then parking-wise, they're going to be parking into the street and into... They're not going to be... I'm not concerned... Headlight-wise. Headlight-wise, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm more concerned that when you integrate a new building and, and you're replacing an old building, that sometimes the lights work, sometimes they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now when you're putting in new technology, sometimes all of a sudden someone wakes up and says, oh, boy this is a heck of a lot brighter than what I'm accustomed to. So I'm just trying to mitigate yeah. um, those yeah, people. Yeah, because right now the building's so like we're... right there on the property line. If you look at the existing conditions, the building's right, the front of the building's right here. It's only right. roughly 10 feet off that property. And again, I, 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 I'm not disputing the, the, the premise that you're actually improving the site. I don't diminish that at all. I'm just seeing if there's a way just to ensure that the residents are, are, are a shielded to the best of our abilities. Again, you, you've done pretty well relative to the one in Chapin, and obviously if there's nothing, if, if you just don't have the room, you don't have the room. I mean, the only thing I could do is put arborvitaes, but the grade difference you're looking at, I think it's like a two, two and a half foot grade difference here from where the fence is, and then it comes up to the guardrail, so it's at a slope, mm -hmm. it's a slope. 
down. That's why there's a guardrail. You're talking about right. yeah, I'm talking about near the guardrail. The That's why. Where's the guardrail start and, and and stop? It starts right at the corner of the building, and then it stops right around here where the back out area is. So just in the proximity of, of motoring traffic. Correct. I don't want anyone to go down. So You're saying it slopes. Yeah, it slopes. Yep. So we're along that side. Are you talking about additional landscaping along the the west proper line? Because yes. both of these are houses. Yeah. The, the, yes. Really and they both. You're not going to have enough room because right. between the slope, between the, between the slope the and the fence, you're not going to have enough room. Well, by the time you get the guardrail in, put the posts in, and then put the posts in. Yeah, you, you don't have anything you left. Know, There's not nothing left. Well. Again, I figured right. I would ask. No, that's fine. It's hard to see on the uh, aerial pat, but you can't the, really see it. There, there's vegetation along there, existing uh, trees and vegetation along that side, uh, which would be the east side of both of those. Peter, you know, what kind houses. of fence is that going to be? Is that close? Is it a closed fence? It would be a closed fence. It's closed, all, yeah. Okay. So, so there is something. So there's something. There's a landscape. It's probably going to be like a vinyl. Uh, probably would be a vinyl. A vinyl closed fence, yeah. All right. That would help it a little bit, I think. Yeah, that's the reason why they put the, we put the fence. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to see. how high he would want to go. He only allowed six You're feet, so. Well, only six, six feet. feet is, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. One of these days, maybe we'll look at that differently. But as of today, you know. It's only six feet. Okay. Joe, Gabe. Peter, you have a uh, this is uh, this rendition of the uh, building by any chance? No. Why is the building facing Chapin Street? Because that's the main entrance. What's the wall that's going to be facing Main Street? Um, they have a security door. Or they have an emergency door here, but I, I don't know. It's going to probably, I don't know. I, I really don't have uh it's going to be glass and probably brick, I would think, but I'm not positive. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think part of the reason they faced uh, the building toward Chapin is that's where the driveway is. So I understand that. That's, you know, but uh, we don't have any jurisdiction over which way it faces. So and it does, it does provide a, a little point. more room. Just a question. That's a good point. You got Main Street looking at a block wall and uh, Chapin Street looking at... Well, I think they're going to be... That, not that Chapin Street is any less than well, Main Street. I, 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 think, I think it'll have windows on that side as well. It just won't have the main entrance there. I get what he's saying, though. <clears throat> also on that guardrail, is that a, uh, a steel guardrail? Wood, wood guardrail. Wood guardrail, okay. Yeah. I didn't bother to look it up. It should be on the detail sheet. I just didn't look it up, Peter. Thank no, you. No problem. <clears throat> yeah, that's the only thing. Uh, the only problem I got is the... I'd like to see what it looks like to make towards Main Street. And I don't think that's a I don't think that's an evil request at all. I'm making a, a, a probably an unreasonable assumption if it's a single story building, office. I would assume that missing a door, it's got to be. I'm assuming brick and, and windows. That's what I'm assuming. You know, I just like to look at it. That's all. That's all I got. Is that it, Joe? Yeah. So? I. I I hate these layouts for the for the parking lot. The last last space, the southwest corner there. Yeah. I know you can get out physically, but I think you should probably cut the you, you should cut the radius back on the on the main street side in this corner. Yeah. yeah. Cut it back a couple feet so that, that way when this when this car pulls out because he can't pull out and turn back this way. He has a little bit of extra room. If you get a truck parking in the second to last spot, he's never going to get out because it's going to stick out. He's going to stick out too far. So if you pull this corner back, there's no there's no real protection that you need to provide for other vehicles. So you can pull that radius back two or three feet and give this guy a little bit of extra room to pull that to make that move out, just so he can he can get in and out. The others seem to yeah. at least there's ways to get in and out of the others. There's, there's some space that they can maneuver. That one, there really isn't any space to maneuver. I didn't have anything else. You all set there now, Joe? You have yeah, anything else? Yeah, So you make those notes? Oh, make yeah. Those changes. Yeah. The handicap is all taken care of? Yeah, he addressed yes. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions, Pat? You all set? Yeah, no, I'll make a motion to yeah. uh, accept the amended site plan subject to... Uh, Joe's comment relative to pulling back the. Uh, the sewer, uh, <laughs> I didn't see anything from the sewer department. I, don't know, I submitted it. Huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Motion they to just did it. They approved it? Okay. They just did it tonight? Moving this okay. uh, curb. So back. there's a motion on the floor made by Pat. Second. Second by Joe. And obviously subject to sewer approval. It's already been approved. Yeah. Second by. Yeah. They did it tonight. They I mean, did it tonight. Do it, we don't have getting a letter. letter. Right. We don't, we don't have, have a letter. letter. So subject, right. and if it's already approved, then guess what? It's, it's a move forward. We'll get a letter eventually. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Put it in the file. Right. Second by uh, Babe. All in favor? Unanimous to four. Who did it? Joe. Joe. Are we good? Thank you. So I just revise the plan and bring, bring the mylar back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can, I'll look at the landscaping too. Pat. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah, yeah, again, I understand that between the slope and, and, and you just don't have the running room, but I, I'm just trying to avoid a conflict before one gets created. Okay. I know. Yeah. I mean, some of those people have lived there a long time. They so have. Call yeah. me on. They have. Yeah. Call me on. Yeah. I recognize that this is an improvement. I recognize this is an improvement, but it's still. Okay, go, go, go. <coughs> Three, 308. Uh, 16 school. <coughs> okay, uh, number four, amended site plan review, 16 School Street, Lambert, Lambert Realty, LLC. The applicant requests uh, amended site plan approval to construct a 578 square foot single story addition to the building on the subject property. Specifically, the proposal is for an office addition uh, to the laundromat. <coughs> the existing building and parking lot will rem remain unchanged. I have reviewed the site plan and find the applicant zoning requirements appear to be met. Therefore, I, re I recommend approval for the site plan. Respectfully, our town planner, Larry Duncan. Uh, I have reviewed the amended site plan. The applicant is no addition to existing building. This is from our town engineer, Vani Reese, and the conservation agent has no comment also. Um, the fire department, the Milford Fire Department has reviewed the amended site plan submitted to 16 School Street and request no changes. The water department, after reviewing the waiver site plan submitted, located on 16 School Street and seeing that no conflict. Okay. They approved it. John Erickson, our, our building inspector, I do not have any concerns with this proposed addition. The uh, uh, Commission on Liability provides no comments. Okay. Amazing. Disability? Huh? You said liability, disability. A disability, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's why they department. didn't comment. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. Thank you. Let <laughs> me go over. Wait for just go over. Slip. Okay, so uh, we have School Street here. Pine Street here. Um, this is the existing building right here, and this is where the proposed addition will go. Uh, they're going to remove the concrete and the bollards that are there, and they're going to then bloom and seed around the outside of it. So we're increasing the open space and getting rid mm -hmm. of the impervious area. Um, we have sewer and water, and then, like like you said, we're not changing the parking area at all. It's staying the same. Staying the same. Yeah. The building is going to go where the uh, uh, what, Larry? Where the tank had been, because he converted all to natural gas. So. Oh, oh, okay. How far off the lot line are you? Three feet. Three feet. There is no. There's no setback. The CA zone. This is the CA zone. No setback. No parking. <laughs> no nothing. No, I, no. Yeah, it, it's close, but. My my, <clears throat> are you going to need a grading easement from the town? Three feet doesn't seem like a lot. No, it's pretty flat. We're not changing the grades there. Yeah, it's. Okay, so if I go there one day and I realize that there's some soil uh, well and beyond, then we'll we'll talk about it then. Okay. Yeah. Joe, <laughs> comment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I was just somewhat worried. What what's the intended use in terms of offices? Is it for the, for that there or is it? Uh, so uh, I just need to get more space to put a little bit more machines there for the weekends. They're pushing the office space on the right. Which is there? Your your office now. Correct. Just to put like eight more machines because over the weekend it becomes very difficult. I'm losing customers constantly. All I'm trying to do is move the office space and the attendant space and add like eight more machines. That's right. all the plan is. Yeah, relocate. My, my, question, my yeah. question was, although I know that the parking issue is you know there isn't per se, but I was worried about usage. But in in terms of 
there using it as an office. I didn't want to see it as a rental space and then having people renting and stuff I like should that. have made it clearer in the, it's relocating his own office yeah. space to the new addition. Yeah, the, okay. Sorry sure. about that. I get that. Babe. I make a motion. Motion made by Babe. Move the amended plan. Seconded by Joe to, uh, approve. to approve the amended site plan. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous of four. Lay and do them all at the okay. same time. Do them later. Let me get my act together. Thank you. <laughs> Correct. Hey, 396 East Main. That is site plan review 396 East Street. East Main. East Main. East Main. Is that East Main Street? That's what it says. That's what it says. Ryan says East Street. Oh, the agenda, yep. Oh, on my agenda, oh, it yeah. says East, East Street. The printer ate the word. Okay, the printer made a mistake. Uh, 396 East Main Street, Map 32, Lot 19 and 20, IC Zone. The applicant requests amended site plan approval to construct a 624 square foot single story addition to the building on the subject property. Specifically, the proposal is for a storage addition to to the rear of the retail store. Also, the northerly driveway on Beaver Street is to be closed. The existing building and remaining parking lot will, lot will be unchanged. I have reviewed the site plan and <coughs> find it applicable to the zoning requirements appear to be met. Therefore, I recommend approval. Larry Duncan, our town planner. I've reviewed the, uh, the amended site plan, submitted 396 East Main Street. The applicant for the addition of the existing building. Uh, the town engineer has no other comments. Conservation agent has no comments. Fire department, the Milford Fire Department has reviewed the site plan and requests no changes. Disability, <coughs> Commission on Disability provides the following comments. In the regard of 396 East Main Street, the site plan per table proposes 88 parking spaces, including two accessible uh, spaces. However, the application form indicates 96 ex existing spaces, 94 proposed. Either way, it is presumed that the parking lot is being reconfigured, possibly resurfaced re and restriped. If so, then the number of accessible spaces should be increased to four with compliant accessible aisles, si no. <coughs> signage, and routes. Yeah, none of that's yeah. applicable. Has that any of that happened? No, that's no not they're not proposing happening. to do any work to the they're parking lot. Changing the parking lot. No. He misunderstood. He's just, he's just making he's, an addition. Oh. I think that where it used to be his recycling Correct. bottle can, can return right. yes. in that vicinity. Yes. 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 So, so this doesn't apply. So this doesn't apply. OK. Yes. So it's Main Street, Beaver Street, right here. Um, here's the existing building in this location here. And then we're, we're putting the proposed addition right in this location. So we have to relocate the gas line. And we're closing this entrance right here because we don't want anyone driving through there close to that. Mm -hmm. So the, the only work would be, you know, just putting a berm across the front so no one can drive through. Okay. But we're no, not proposing any restriping because there's no striping in there. There's no striping out. And no so, grade change. Oh, okay. There's the old Patrician. Huh? So that's a long way back. The Patrician. That's, that's too far back. I remember that. Yeah, I know. That's a long time ago. Motion. Motion made by Pat to send a favorable to. No, no, no. It's just amended site. Amended site plan. Seconded by Babe. All in favor? Unanimous of four. It's a tough day today. Huh? What is this? 232 West. And it's site plan video 232 West Street. Okay, I have some. Do you have that one, Peter? Yes, I do. He's got all of them. Oh, you have them all. I just wanted to give you a <coughs> What is this? This is an estate then? Okay, so I have one. Actually, I have one. 
Okay. I also have the, the wall. I, have, yeah. I do have okay. a weapon. Yeah, yeah. I thought you did. That's the retaining wall. Obviously, I got to ask a super question. Why wasn't the plan followed? Why wasn't it filed? Followed. Okay. All right. The applicant requests the amended site plan approval to correct the deficiencies created <coughs> during construction. The previously approved site was to allow the to allow for construction of a 1,030 square foot addition to the existing used car dealership to accommodate a site estate inspection bay. During construction, the approval site plan was not followed, creating the following deficiencies. The, <clears throat> the grading plan was not adhered to. The site was was regarded in, in a degraded re in a dramatically different manner, resulted in the need for a retaining for a retaining wall, guardrails, drainage recharge chambers, and reconfiguration of the customer's parking and vehicle display area. Number two, there is no stamp plan for the retaining wall as required. Number three, the site has been virtually striped of, stripped, stripped of trees and vegetation, leaving very little natural screening for the adjacent residential properties to the south and west. Number four, the paved vehicle displayed area is not of significant width to, to accommodate the vehicles to be displayed. Currently displayed vehicles are scattered on the, not, on the newly cleared unpaved area on the upper portion of the site. Number five, it is, clear, it is unclear if the building has a second floor since the roof has a residential style dormer on the westerly side of the new roof. Therefore, I recommend the review of this amended site plan to continue to the next meeting to allow time for the applicant's engineer to address the deficiency noted above. There's more letters. Yep. The, uh, I have reviewed the amended site plan submitted by 232 West Street, the application is for in addition to the existing building and redevelopment of the site, including the drainage infiltration basin. The town engineer requests that the design be submitted for the retaining wall. It must be signed and stamped by the PE. Cons the conservation agent has no comment. This is from John Erickson, our building inspector. I do not have any concerns over the proposed amend site on 332 West Street. And he reiterates the design for the wall. Fire department, what, Larry? John reiterated the retaining wall design requirement. The proposed retaining wall should be accompanied by a design plan in accordance, to, in accordance with 1.15.2.1 on the Z zoning board, zoning laws. <clears throat> The fire department, the Milford Fire Department has reviewed the amended site plan, uh, West Street, and requests no changes. The water company, after reviewing the waiver site plan submitted, located on 232 West Street, seeing no conflict of interest proposed to the existing water utility. Uh, disability, Commission on Disability provides no comments. All right. Uh, in your packet uh, before Peter does the full presentation, as long as you're going through the packet, uh, the next page uh, after uh, Commission on Disabilities is the application. The page after that uh, I included the uh, previously approved site plan that you approved uh, back in February. Uh, and then after that is the, is the current uh, proposal that, uh, that Peter is going to present. I'm just going to go over the, what the site <coughs> we're proposing now because this is what the site was approved and then this is what the site, this is what we're proposing now. And then I, can, I guess we can compare after. Um, so we have West Street across the bottom here. Um, we have the existing building that's out there right now. 
and this was the proposed addition now it is existing so this is constructed and it is built um, it does not have a second floor it's only a one-story build it's a metal building I think with the roof but there is no floor above that so there's only one one story there's nothing not a second story so what happened during construction is they this was supposed to be f basically working with the grades and what they did is they lowered the the structure down to match the existing structure. So by doing that, this grade goes up. So this is this is going up the hill. So by lowering this, they they lowered this area here. And it did two things. It created a low point in this location here. And it also created this this change in grade. Um, so what we what we proposed um, we're proposing the retaining wall in this location right here with the guardrail. And then we're proposing a catch basin here. And then there's an existing catch basin. So that catch basin will collect this runoff here because it is lower than the site. And then that'll just bring it out to where it con connects to an existing drain line and goes out off site. So also what we're proposing is this recharge area because this is all pavement now. There, there is an increase in pavement. So we had to do a drainage analysis. And what we did is we took the, the, proposed, what, the existing addition, which was proposed, we're taking that complete roof, and we're taking this section of the existing roof, and we're putting it into this underground basin. And the only reason why it's connected to this catch basin is for like an overflow, emergency overflow, so if it fills up, then it will just go into um, the drainage. Um, so then that will go down. And then we reconfigured the <coughs> display area by pushing the display area closer to the road um, and, and creating this riprap slope and keeping the grade the way it is on the top. So this is just gonna be loomed and seeded. It was, some of this was pavement before and now we're gonna rip that up and we're going to loom and seed that area. Um, and then we, Bob did revise the calculations and we have the proposed parking along the front here as well as here. Um, there were less spaces um, that are being, we're providing less spaces than before, so. Uh, so less what, customer parking? Or yeah, less? less customer parking. Before there was 14 spaces, now um, I think there's only eight. There's eight, but it, me it meets the zoning requirements. I think Bob, when he originally calculated the 14, it, he was he, he how high is the retaining wall? How high is the retaining wall? It looks like it's approximately six feet high. It goes the bottom of the retaining wall is at 342. I say 342.5. The top of the retaining wall in this location here is rough, the highest point would be right in this location here. It's 348. So you're looking at five and a half feet at the worst case, which is right on this corner. It does, it does, the grade does slope down. It's 346, so it's going, it's like a four foot wall over here. And then as you come down, it's three feet, and then there's only, it's a one foot right at the, at the end. Yeah, the other plan is. I, I don't mean to be fresh. But if you came to us initially with this plan, I, I don't think I would have gone with it, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I, I don't think it's the most sensible for, for, this, for this property. Nope. The uh, footing that's out there now doesn't conform to what the engineered uh, stamp plan shows, that other packet that you got. So... Um, Footing will have to be removed and replaced with this, uh, with the new designed as submitted. Um, and how did this happen, Ray? Uh, good evening. Um, when we start to do that, uh, project, do you want to come up here on the, the mic? Uh, so we can hear you. You want me to on the microphone? Yeah. Like yes, please. Uh, good evening, why everybody. Just sit right down. Sure. Um, when we start to do that project and I came in front of the board, I didn't really mean to go and start to do it the way it happened 
without any engineering work. The person who was doing the construction site for me, after we start to put the new building up, he convinced me that we shouldn't really have two levels on the building. We were gonna have like three stairs in between the old building and the new building. So as, as we start going and that happened without even, I didn't really know it's gonna create a problem. I said, if you feel that better off, let's do it then. So we went, we went and lowered the building. Uh, it's my first project, I'm not an engineer and I, I admit it was a mistake. And I did not mean to do it this way and force it. Uh, and uh, So we start doing that and we realize that the entry is gonna be a problem after we kinda was there. So as we go and we start to make, basically make the problem bigger. So that's what, uh, that's what, that's how it, how exactly it happened. I'm trying to make it a better place for me to work. I want to meet the requirement. I don't want to violate. If the if the mm -hmm. board requests change, I'll change. Um, no, 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 no. I, again, what I recall was this was going to be um, a car inspection bay, if I recall correctly. It is. That's and yes. again, it made perfect sense that this was going to be higher because it wasn't supposed to be part of the working shop, if you will. Now, unfortunately, um, it's all uniform, which, you know, as you get older, that's great for you. You don't have to climb stairs. I'm, I'm okay with that. But uh, unfortunately, now it's changed the grade. It's changed uh, the water. It's, cha it, it's, it's the whole dramatically thing. changed the site. Right. That a six-foot retaining wall um, <laughs> and, and removing all the vegetation it just doesn't seem reasonable to me. That's, that's my problem, I guess. You know, you, you've somewhat corrected or have come with a calculation of correcting some of the water. You know, the underground, how how low is it before, you know, how full does it have to be before it, it, it spills out? It has to be, those chambers are roughly two and a half feet, <coughs> 30 inches high, so that would have to fill up the 30 inches and then the emergency would overflow. So you have a pretty good volume in those chambers. Because I think there are... Uh, no, I understand that, but now you really have no place to go except for, you, you, you know. You, well, it's going to recharge into the ground, and then it's going to, it has uh, a place uh, to go. It has, it, it's going to go to that. Provided that we don't have a, a North Carolina storm, yes. Right, but then if it does fill up, if, if it does fill up, it will go into the, <coughs> the drain line that we're proposing, and it'll go to the same. What are we going to do, okay, what are we going to do relative to perhaps putting up some additional screening for the, for, you know, for the neighbors <coughs> behind the neighbors. you? What, what are we doing? <coughs> Um, I, I, I know you said you planted grass. I know there's some riprap there, but what else are we doing? Okay, so the tree line stops right, right here. So you're looking at from here to here in this location. Mm -hmm. The tree line, there's a tree line that stops. It's right here. It comes like this. And Where it says town line? Because on mine it says town line. Yeah, the, right yeah. in that location, okay. that, there the is deal the time. vegetation. I don't, I don't know if, I don't, I don't think there's anything there. But this grade, there's a very big difference in grade. It's like an eight-foot difference in grade from this house location to the top of the berm. So the house is lower. The house is much lower than the site. So you're not going to see anything from the house below. No, I know, but I, I, so I wouldn't have been a big advocate of, rip, of taking down everything. Because again, to me, you're still a commercial application to a residential. That, the, mm -hmm. Again, I, I it's not like I just invent these things and no, I just and that, decided to get on the soapbox today. No, no, I've always that. been very sensitive to residential commercial so well I, I was out there yesterday and uh, the site's very visible especially now that all the vegetation's gone uh, and the grade's been changed uh, to the extent that they had to do a retaining wall there uh, the, the riprap wall there in, in the first place uh, so you can see right into the site so I guess uh, uh, aside from the other issues that were in my list of deficiencies the the screening and, and uh, you know fencing and, and landscaping, uh, not just on the Hopedale Town Line side, which is basically the west uh, side of the property, but to the property south of this site, uh, much of the vegetation is gone there as well. Uh, not it's not totally eliminated, but pretty close. So um, I, I would think you would want to see some screening um, to fill in all of those areas that aren't currently screened. We can look at that too. So you'd have both fencing yeah, I, and screen. I'd appreciate it if you did. Okay. Um, uh, one other question, and then I'll leave it alone. Um, obviously, you know your business better than, than any of us. 
the reduction from 14 customer parking to eight. How realistic is that? I understand you're trying now to make everything conform because unfortunately now you have a retaining wall which used to, which was never there before. So I, I'm just trying to be realistic with the reduction of, you know, um, from, from, from 14 to eight. To be honest with you, I think we have enough space uh, for our work and area, for the amount of business we do, I don't think we're going to have a problem. How many employees do you have presently? Uh, four. Including yourself? Yes. So there's half the spots right there, so then the other half are resonated to uh, four customers, no more than four customers at any given time. Again, I don't know your business. I'm sure you know a lot better than I, but I'm just trying to be realistic. Right. If you really... Is there a way to increase it to 10? Bob, Actually, Peter, Peter I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes. that was a, my apologies. Fine. No, we can look at that. Yeah, they yeah, need to look at the width of it anyway because you, it's impossible to get cars and keep them up there, even for display purposes, even if their attendants are moving the cars and not the customers, uh, because you can pretty well pack them in, but you have to have some space to maneuver. Yeah, so yeah. they're going to need to make the, the, the parking Can area up there as well? yeah. wider anyway. Right. So yeah, 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 in doing say, you that... Can't, you can't park cars like this. It's right. impossible. Even no. With, no. Even with a parking job, you can't get them in. So in you can only when it's snowing. In doing that, they're, they're, they would be able to... Uh, they're going to need to pave more area up on top anyway. But I guess my other concern is how do you get into a parallel parking stall if you're a customer, you're going to be driving into the site mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to be heading south along that stretch uh, as you're going uh, along the, the new uh, retaining wall and, and, uh, uh, and barrier. So how are you going to get turned around so you can parallel park heading the other direction? Uh, so I, I think we need to look at that, uh, how that's going to work, because that's going to affect two stalls because my, my initial thought was, well, we'll just flip it and put the parallel parking stalls along the retaining wall and guardrail and run them up toward the display area and not have any parallel parking stalls where they're shown now. You might be able to do it with angled parking too and then have to do like a, a turnaround at well, the they'd end. Have, yeah, some, somewhere you're going to have to reconfigure room. the parking because it's not, it won't work and it's it's senseless the way it is presently. You can do some animal parking at the, at the beginning. Yeah. The, other, the other thing you got to take a look at, Peter, is there's two things on the retaining wall. Yep. Um, you're showing a 24-foot distance from the paved area to the guardrail, it looks like. But then if you go to the retaining wall detail, I don't think it's a big deal. But um, the... Uh, the, they're showing the guardrail outside outside of the five foot uh, toe of the retaining wall, and I think you're putting it up against the retaining wall. So right. you need to make sure that the, the retaining wall detail matches, so that so that you can put it where you want to put it, and make sure that the, uh, the the structural is okay with that. I don't think it'll be a big deal because you you should be able to do that. And then the detail for the height of the retaining wall on the last sheet, yeah. they should label whatever the maximum height is because right now it could be anything. And I just want to make sure that the, the structural is okay with whatever the height is that you actually need. <coughs> and the detail of the gravel drain that he drew, I'm sort of looking at it saying, what the hell does somebody do when they construct that? I mean, it's sort of a freeform gravel drain. I think that needs to be defined as to what he actually thinks that gravel drain needs to be. You have the drain beyond, behind you? Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's putting free, uh, free draining material in here. The question becomes to me, does he want to put a pipe at the bottom of this and pick it up and run it somewhere, or where does it go? Okay. I mean, right now the water just stays. So I think you want to clean those up. And then once you figure out where the, where the guardrail can be, you know, do you actually have the 24 feet between paved area, or, or are you going to have to pave right up to the property line to get 24, or whatever you're going to do up in here? It'll straighten you out. And then, as Larry said, this... This has to get increased a little bit just because trying to maneuver cars into 24 feet, you can get one car in, but then trying to move that second car in the line isn't going to happen. And the display area needs to be paved. Uh, yeah. So, so there'd be an adjustment up there anyway. Yeah. Um, while you're still discussing the, the site and the screening, uh, uh, I believe in the butters present, uh, I, they I, may have some comments. So okay. before you. All right. Dave, uh, you all set? Do you have any questions? Huh? Yeah, Peter, what's the uh, did you do any perk, perk rates where the uh, 
I'm not sure I'd have to talk to Bob to see if he did any. Work rates. He's looking, yeah, he's looking for testing, right, in the basin? Well, where the uh, chambers are going to go. Right. No, I understand. Yeah, I don't know. Chamber, he, putting okay. the chambers there in, in play is like not putting chambers at all. Yeah. You know, I think Vonnie's comment, as I recall, was that it would be more like a um, um, retention area mm -hmm. that uh, during a storm it's going to fill up and run out. Uh, that there's going to be very little actual recharge there, but what it'll do is slow down the runoff during a storm, yeah, and that's positive as well. But it, it just it just isn't going to recharge when much at all. Recharge, it's, it's recharge. So it's not a recharge. No, we don't know. I, I, ha I have to talk to Bob. Yeah, he didn't design it. He, he just got stuck coming to the meeting. I think you have your work cut out. We have a uh, person here. Would you like to? Are you the abutter? I'm, yeah, I you want to stand up and get stand yeah. up and give us your name and your address. Um, Virginia Anzarek. I live at 226. Okay. I just didn't want any more surprises because all of a sudden one day the machines pulling all the trees down which <coughs> was our piece between us and the noise from the building you know oh okay and it's like and all of a sudden there were machines over there and all almost all the trees were gone one you know over the course of a couple weekends it's like so that there's like a couple trees you know like one toward the back of the property and then uh -huh. two or three up front and it's like i just didn't want any more surprises that's why i wanted to yeah, okay just in case of what i knew what was going on you know i believe that they're going to be working on a different um Right. Well, I know they did come uh, on over a different and talk to my daughter one day because yeah. my son-in-law went over and talked to them and stuff, but I just didn't want any more surprises when all of a sudden it's not going on. No, I think they're going to work on a, uh, uh, on a new um, vegetation plan. Right. No, I know where she lives. I can. Yeah. 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 So they they will work on it. They, they have to come back to see us. And uh, if you have any in, any problems, you you're welcome to come in and listen to when they return with well, their just, site just plan. Just so yeah, I that's important for you. Like no, I think that I, I think on this go around, they're certainly going to be putting in some additional plantings they are. Uh, of, yeah. of 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 size to try to you know. We are actually. No, no, I know, I know. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your willingness. Of course. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you came forward, and uh, are you? You will be watching them, I'm sure. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to be going away, but my daughter does like a hot because she has little ones too. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we're going to yeah. continue this to the next meeting. Yep. Yes. Motion made to by Pat to continue to the next meeting. Second by Babe. All in favor? Unanimous. Four. We'll need an extension, maybe. Huh? No, it's because no. it's an amended. It's just, just amended. yeah. Okay. Well, we're still within time frames. Okay, well, so you have the option of saying no and then going back to the original plan. Um, I have well, a question right. uh, for the board. Uh, now, uh, the pavement around the building, can we do anything or we cannot work at all? We have to wait for the next meeting. Are we basically stopped? We cannot do anything? or? Well, you're going to have to replace the footing for the retaining wall anyway because I don't believe what's in the ground, according to... Uh, uh, Bob Poxon is what is specified on the uh, plan, on the engineered plan. So, um, back to the building inspector, have him inspect the footing. And if he that's his job. If he approved that, can we can we walk? Because we are getting, we're coming very close to the rain and the water. See, well, as Babe said, see John Erickson, the building inspector. Tell him that you were here, and then go uh, ask him to come up and look at the site, okay. and then he'll give you the okay to move on. You just do well, approval. Just he yeah. But but if yeah, but if he's submitted a stamped engineer's plan and he's not following it, then he's just invalidating everything that was just done on your behalf. No, but I understand. But if but it's up to John to make well, that John, determination. John's going to do the inspections yeah. anyway to make sure that the rebar is done right. The concrete spot uh, poured the right amount of concrete. So, so that's strange. So if we follow Mr. Duncan, that engineering plan for the retaining wall, that should be okay for us to kind of... have to talk to John. Oh, I have to, okay, I'll talk to the yeah, Thank I'll talk you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, number seven. Good night. Bond release for Woodland Court, Dennis... De Jano. De Jando. He's requesting a final bond release. The, uh, I included his letter uh, and the deeds. 
I also included in your packet the uh, last letter that I had done. Uh, What's it looking uh, for? Ten thousand. Yeah, that the final? ten ten thousand is remaining. So uh, the road's been accepted. And we've accepted the road, so you, you have off. to. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Pat. To how much is he? At least ten thousand. The, the entire release the balance. Oh, release the, yeah, the release 10, the remainder of the bond. Plus ten thousand plus interest. Plus interest, yeah. Plus ten thousand plus interest. Second. Yeah, I did. You second it. Yeah, we're all set. Just call. All the vote. in favor. Aye. Unanimous of four. <coughs> all right. ZBA variance, Kevin Dun Dunnelin, 304 Purchase Street, Map 9, Lot 17, RC Zone. The applicant is requesting a variance to allow for a replacement of a non conforming use with another on the subject property. Specifically, the proposal is to raise the existing two family dwelling on the property and construct a new two family dwelling. Although the applicant is requesting a variance, it appears to this writer that the appropriate, appropriate relief would be in the form of a, of a special permit under the ZB, ZBA law section 3.1.4 to change from one non-conforming use to another. Therefore, I recommend a favorable report to be forwarded to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the and grant the special permit. Larry Duncan. Well, the, the rest of it, the grant the special permit under 3.1.4, uh, subject to the requirements of 3.13, which are the new standards for two family dwellings. Okay, thank you. Got another one with shiny ones. I didn't do this one. Oh. Yeah, I can't see this one with the glare. I know, Is that's what I told you. Have in the small packet, you should bring it. Oh, I didn't see that one. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Is that who it is? Okay. I didn't know that was a two store. I didn't know that was a two family. Yeah. So, as I can remember, never noticed that. I always assumed it was a single. Whose house is this? Looked always like a single to me. Yeah, I think they applied for the wrong thing because so you're saying it, should be a special it's, permit? it should be a special, oh, special permit. permit. If it's a variance, there would be a use variance. So I think it should be a special permit. Uh, I contacted town council, so when he does the uh, legal notice, he'll, he'll have it for variance wow. and or special permit as appropriate. Uh, so they'll be covered that way. But, uh, but I think it's a, just a straightforward special permit. Okay. Oh, is that the house? Yeah. I'm sorry, Peter. Go ahead. It's all right. Um, just to get everyone familiar where we are, Purchase Street is here, Wales Street, and then Tanglewood Drive. The existing structure is right here. And then um, driveway is in this location here. What they want to do is they want to raise the structure, put in a new two-family here with the two driveways. It's going to have one door in the front, so it's going to look like a house. Mm -hmm. Um, with the porch. Um, so you, you, on one of the pictures you have the satellite. If you look at the, the second sheet that I handed out, is a satellite of the, of the existing house right there. And then we have um, coming northerly on, on Purchase Street. You can see the driveway, the existing driveway is right after that utility pole. Yep. And then we have a shot looking right at the existing structure. Mm-hmm. And then this is suddenly coming, going suddenly down Purchase mm -hmm. Street. <clears throat> and then the middle one right here is from Wales. You're looking right at the structure. Right. And then this is, this is the, um, the view from Tanglewood Drive. This fence is basically along here, along the property line. So this lawn area is right in this area here. Yeah, I think the configuration they're showing uh, is automatically heading in the direction of complying with Section 3.13. Okay. And we meet all the setbacks in the in the in the zone. In the the lot is 53,000 square feet. In size. 53. Yeah. But it should be a special permit. It should. Okay. Variance. All right. Any questions from Joe or Babe? Pat. I'll grant um, a favorable under. 
3.13, the special permit. To Larry's point. Um, Motion made what, by Pat. Larry's point? No. Oh. <laughs> Motion made by Pat to send a favorable to the zoning board. Under section, with, un, under, under section 3.13, special permit. Second by Babe. All in favor? Unanimous to four. Oh, I just wrote on it. That doesn't matter. Joe, can I have your letter, please? Thank you. It will be done this second. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong, is that the wrong one? No. We can take that one, too, because you probably need it. That's the one we need. Okay. You, you, guys don't want that one. You, know, you, don't want you want this? Sure. You can yeah, take all this John, back. They, they want to use it. You're welcome to take it back. All right. Okay, do you want to do nine? Okay, number nine, that? ZBA variance referral, 32 Roland Way, Gavin Miles. The applicant is requesting a variance to allow for a 12, a 14, 14 feet by 21 foot single family addition to the existing dwelling on the subject property to be 14 feet from, from the side west property line, 20 feet minimum set, setback required. There appears to be an adequate area on the property to build a much larger addition in a different configuration on the west side of the house without a variance. Therefore, I recommend unfavorable report to forward to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, the last Our town two, panel. Yeah. <coughs> what? The last two pages, the very last page was the uh, uh, small plan that was submitted uh, showing where the addition was going to go. Uh, on the west side of the existing house. Um, it's almost like an in-law apartment, but not really. Well, the application I says, know. yeah. So they like parents, except it's only a bedroom, not an in-law apartment. That's what I said. But uh, in terms of configuring an addition, there's plenty of room, as the aerial photo on the next to the last sheet shows. There's plenty of room uh, you know, on that end of the house to still do an addition without uh, encroaching into the required setback. So that's why I recommended uh, unfavorable. Okay. I got it. Yeah, I don't. Uh, okay. I got to go with no on this one. Joe, babe, do I have a motion? I'm unfavorable. Motion made by Pat to send an unfavorable to the ZBA. Do I hear a second? Second by Joe. All in favor? Unanimous of four. Okay. Thank you. I do wait for Lena to give it to me. Um, since John's not here, um, I would ask that uh, we continue any actual discussion about uh, the sign amendment uh, until next time. But I'd, I would like to just take a quick second to point out um, the updated or revised draft that you have in your packet. Um, I added a couple of uh, spots in there uh, based on our prior conversations. On page one, um, under the uh, definition of sign, uh, I renumbered the, uh, um, the categories that aren't considered signs, added a new uh, D uh, in terms of the war right. veteran markers that are installed similar to street signs yeah. on, uh, on certain uh, intersections, so-called Memorial Square intersections that are designated by selectmen. Uh, the signs are in the public right-of-way. They're, they're basically street signs, and they're usually on the diagonal corner from the existing street signs at that intersection, but uh, those clearly don't advertise anything, and they're, they're war memorials. Um, so to make sure that they're not considered signs uh, any more than the street sign, the street name signs would be, uh, I added that. Um, then on page two, uh, to try and, and get at the, uh, um, oh, the, the tethered signs. balloon kerfluffle uh, <laughs> that, that, that Pat and I were, have, have, have had. I'm okay with 24 feet. So uh, I separated it, and inflatable signs is one thing, but tethered balloons, uh, big tethered balloons, <laughs> over 24, um, 24 feet in diameter. It should have been inches, but... Uh, no, no, you said feet. I'm going oh, feet. I know what I said. <laughs> I'm going feet. 24 feet is pretty big. Yeah. No, That's I, pretty big. It's supposed to have been 24 inches. Oh, no, I'm going uh, feet. Yeah, well... You told me your concern was a blimp. 
No. You did, I'm, I'm well, sorry. No, no I'm, I'm going with feet. I'm fine with feet. You're going uh, to inches. Forget I'm, it. I'm telling you it was inches. So. Uh, does it say feet? It does. It does say feet now. <laughs> I was fine with feet. And, and, and the next revision will say inches, and then we can argue okay. about it again. Well, you know it's okay. going to happen. And then on page three, yep. moving right along, uh, down near the bottom of the page, uh, under exemptions um, on zoning lots, uh, it's 3.9.5, uh, 0.2.3. Uh, it says any uh, exemption for sign placement on zoning lots shall be limited to the following. Any sign inside an athletic facility, including signs attached to the inside of a wall or fence, the message of which is not visible from the exterior. Previously, it didn't have that, the message of which uh, is not in there, and the word generally was in there. So I took out generally, added the message of which is not uh, visible from the exterior, which gets more at the intent of what we were talking about, I think. And I'm trying to remember if there was anything else. I don't see anything else. Larry, on page on six. The, not to interrupt you, but I'm going to quickly. Oh, 39512, when we talk about electronic message panels. Hold on a second. It says by the police department for traffic control and or safety purposes. Right. Can we also add public message? Like? Well, um, let's just say that uh, they're enforcing now um, a, a winter snow ban or oh, okay. a no that's, parking or. But that's traffic control. I don't know if that's traffic control. Public right. message, okay, there's a water band. Yeah, they did use them for stuff like water band. I, I just, can we just add again if you it's under the control that? of the I think you're getting into territory that you don't need to get into and, yeah, well, and it's just you know, gonna just gonna well, listen, we're, we're getting into territory because there's signs at, at, at tank field so you know what let's not get into the challengings of getting into territory that we don't belong I mean that's well but it says say traffic control or safety purposes there are other I guess you could, I guess you could. Could consider it to be safety purposes and if sir. if you look at if but you look at uh, the other safety yeah. It, but public That's utility, but public utility warnings or informational signs regarding poles, lines, pipes, or similar facilities. Yeah, but you were uh, talking specifically electronic messages, and I think well, that you just that, need to add. I wouldn't add any more than we just had to. I don't. Right, I'll we'll, check we'll, with Jerry. I'm but check this off. We'll fight I'll about check this with one Jerry. Day. No problem. I'll check with Jerry okay. on that. But I think that's I getting did, too content. I did do some more thinking about it, though, in a certain sense, Larry and. and <coughs> my, my feeling is the only way that, that this passes town meeting is that we will need to, I, I believe the owners or the people that control Tank Field, Guadalajara, Rosenfeld, will need to ask for a variance because I don't believe that we can set, I don't, I don't want to set the requirements of RAs or for residential zoning to allow signs of the size that people think they want right. on on tank field. Well, they may they may do that anyway. No matter what, no matter what That's gets right. adopted they can do, they there, they anyway. <laughs> have to but, go. But, I, but I think we need to make sure that we're that, that when because it's going to come up. Well, what are you doing for tank field? I think we're not doing for tank field. I think you need to do that as a, as a variance, just like we've done for all the schools. Have requested right. variances for signs at those locations because right. because if we set it up to, to make it legal to put those size signs up in a residential zone, mm. to me that's something that I can't support because I don't think I want a 24 square foot sign on everybody's houses. Well, and we're going to find zone. out in the intervening months between now and when yep. we get to town meeting. Uh, how the selectmen's temporary yeah. rules uh, work or yeah. not? Because I think it's going to be hard to uh, to manage. But yeah, I, I, I think it at, is. At any rate, uh, I think that's the way they they could go for a permanent uh, a permanent for a variance, variance yeah. that sets up the maximum amount of signs, and then the selectmen could control that. If that's one sign, four signs, right. whatever is is you know the maximum you got to put up there is X. Right. And and then go forward with it that way. Yeah. Because if we try to write it into here, I think we lose. Yeah. That, well, speaking of that, on page six, uh, the part of the introductory language uh, for that subsection, which is 3911, temporary and or portable signs permitted, uh, I changed the language to say on zoning lots within RA, RB, RC, RD, and OR, and within non residential zoning districts where the principal use on a particular zoning lot is residential. So you have a lot of houses in the CB zone, for example, around downtown. 
temporary and portable signs are allowed subject to what the rest of it is. So if you, if you have a house and you happen to be in a, a non-residential zoning district, these residential zone standards <laughs> would still apply uh, on that parcel. Uh, and that was just something that, that we'd inadvertently overlooked and, and someone had yeah, called and asked that question, so I changed that. Yeah. So at any rate. Yeah, you have a resident, if you have a residence in a, in a different zone, well, it's not being used that way. I meant to bring in a uh, real estate sign. Today. Uh, real estate signs have the sign themselves have the. Open house and then they have the real estate. Oh, no, they have the. Done with the company and everything, but they also have a banner, which is more, which is probably more important to the seller, to the to brokers, with their name and, and the information on it. So, and then if you have an open house, or if it says it's no, still pending, or yeah. Whatever. So there's actually you have to calculate a full sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is why I was it's suggesting that the it, again the original the original sign itself is signed like the size of a political sign. Right. But the rest of it with the additional banners are going to be more. Yeah, they just, uh, if, it, if it goes the way it's written, they wouldn't be able to use those much bigger signs in Milford. They could use them in other towns that allow for them. But if, but if we're trying to regulate them in a content-neutral manner, then we need to find the, the, the typical sign that covers the majority of the temporary signs oh. in town. Well, well in, in, in actuality, it would, it, it, depending on how you read this, it would cover it, I believe, because that, that could be considered two signs. So the upper one is four square feet, the lower one is less than that, but it's two signs. So, in fact, that would be covered, but that would use up two of their four if, yeah, if we no, stayed with it the way it is right now. And now what's the uh, time? What is the time frame? I didn't catch. There isn't any. Okay. That's, that's up for discussion. It's just, it's just yeah. four, four signs on the same lot. At any one time, because because there's no way to. It's hard to. It's gonna be hard, but yeah. they, we may want to. And depending on what you're advertising, sometimes the the duration needs to be much longer than you know two weeks before some special event. Yeah, no, so, in, in, yeah, in residential, in residential, I think it would be a, t a total time frame. It would be a day, you know, so many days. That's all you could do. It wouldn't be before the event. Yeah, but after that the event. that never passed. Larkin? Well, I don't know. It may or may not, because now you're effectively allowing it to be permanent. And I don't know that people want permanent signs in a residential zone with no control. No, but it says temporary. It says temporary signs, no more than four of them at any one time. So people are going to change them up. People that are prone to having signs are going to advertise different things but when they want to. But what does temporary mean? I don't care if you could see it. Hmm? What does temporary mean? Uh, yeah. it's, not, it's not defined. So temporary doesn't mean anything other than permanent. It's permanent. Yeah, if you, if the way it's written right now, it's no different. Spot, you right. So well, either we we'll meant temporary, to. temporary, or, 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 we, or we make them permanent. Oh, I but to me, I, I'm against it if you want to make, if you effectively want to make permanent signs as a residential zone. I, I don't think that's, All right. I don't well, think there's we'll reason for that. Can you, um, can you just explain to me 3942? I just put it away. Uh, I'll Go read on. it. Any sign that may be confused with an official traffic control device. Right. So if I have a stop sign in my backyard, I can't have it anymore? You're going to be arrested. <laughs> well, to me, it's, it's, it can We're, be. We'll cuff you and, <laughs> and haul you off. I don't think that's okay. Well, if it's not visible... Uh, it's going to well, be hard to detect. I know it's back there, and if you go back there, you well, might you see it. You shouldn't have told me. <laughs> Larry, I, I, you know what? I, I don't know what harm it serves by having, and I'm not alone. I'm not the only one in town that has a random light or stop sign or do not enter or something hung in their backyard. And, and personally, So you were probably one of those guys. The last time college, I checked, right? no cars go back there anyhow, and if they do, maybe they should stop. <laughs> All right. I like so, to get rid of that. So one. you had you had uh, you had stoplights in your dorm room in college, right? I still do. You still do. <laughs> uh, All well, right. So we'll talk about getting rid of that. We'll talk one. about we'll talk when John's about here. Motion to adjourn. Um, Thanks, Joe. Joe made a motion to adjourn. Second by Pat. All in favor. Good night, everyone.